Shalom. Our verse for today is Mark chapter 9 verse 2. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain on their own by themselves. There in their presence he was transfigured. In the Synoptic Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the account of the transfiguration of Jesus is situated within the revelation of who Jesus is and what his mission was. First, the res in response to Jesus' question of what people thought of him and what the disciples thought, Peter said, you are the Christ. Second, presuming that the disciples understood who he was as Messiah, Jesus began to teach them concerning his passion, death, and resurrection. Third, the disciples didn't understand why the Messiah had to suffer with Peter even rebuking Jesus. But Jesus used the opportunity to instruct them on the conditions of discipleship. You have to renounce yourself, take up your cross, and follow the Master. To help them comprehend the glory he had with the Father, the same glory that awaits him after his earthly mission, Jesus allowed three of his disciples to witness his transfiguration. These three may have formed the inner core of Jesus' following. They were mentioned in Mark 5.37 on the occasion of the raising up of the daughter of Jairus. They are also mentioned in Mark 13.3 when they questioned Jesus about his startling prediction of the forthcoming destruction of the temple buildings. We also see them mentioned in Mark 14.33 when Jesus was praying in Gethsemane. We can conclude that they were the leading figures among the disciples of Jesus. The Greek word used to describe Jesus' transfiguration is metamorphote, from the deponent verb metamorphomai. The closest English word sound in sound is metamorphosis, metamorphos. It simply points to an outwardly perceptible change of form. In its translation as transfiguration, trans plus figure, reference is to a transformation of a thing, person, into something more beautiful and elevated. During the transfiguration, the clothes of Jesus became brilliantly white, whiter than any earthly bleacher could make them. A cloud came covering them in shadow and a voice was heard saying, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Elijah and Moses also appeared and were talking to Jesus. The presence of these two Old Testament figures who had theophanic experiences in their days indicates that the transfiguration was a theophany. In Exodus 24, for instance, Moses and Joshua experienced the glory of God on Mount Sinai and a cloud covered it for six days. Six days is mentioned like in Mark, although used differently. God's speech in Exodus was after six days and was about the construction of the tabernacle which was the mark of the divine presence. So, the transfiguration points to Jesus as the new tabernacle of God's presence among men. In fact, the statement that Jesus was transfigured evokes the Greek idea that God sometimes walked the earth in human form. Why was the transfiguration necessary? When the disciples heard that Jesus will suffer and die, they were confused as to why the Messiah would suffer and they became discouraged. This led Jesus to teach them about discipleship. Jesus needed, however, to strengthen their faith concerning the future. He was revealing to them that there is more beyond death. The proof that death does not have the last word is seen in the appearance of Elijah and Moses. Their sins had died, yet they were there with Jesus. The beauty of the experience met Peter to suggest that they should remain there and he offered to make tents for Jesus, Elijah, and Moses. May God help us to experience such beauty. I pray that Jesus who had come to lead us to salvation will give us an experience of his glory so that our hope in the glorious future that awaits us will be made strong. And may no difficulty of these present times discourage us from following Jesus faithfully. Amen.